Hello, uh, Lolo, I'm Rangru. Hello, Lolo, I am Rangru. And I'm Nilla. And we're here today with a 1v1 from the SDL monthly tournament. We are on Slut's Rest. And who do we have playing today, Mr. Nilla? Today we have in the blue on the left Stanikowski playing as Rima Rapata. And on the right in red, we have Manu playing one division from my own heart, the 184th. Isn't it crazy that it's been. What? Nearly four years since Steel Division's come out? Yeah, and there's still a lot of people playing it, and there's, what, like, at least 275 divisions at this point? Yeah, I'm sure that they're going to figure out a way to put more in. I mean, hell, they're putting in big-boned people in one of the new divisions. I know. And they're adding Bulgaria? That's wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, eventually we'll just have every single division from every single conflict, including the first world where they're going to go back in time somehow. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if how storm 1v1s work like this, you're not even using that many tanks. True, yeah, and especially these two divisions. They're both just infantry divisions. There's some armor. You have some half-tracks with the Tanker Desaniki pushing up in the middle. Actually, pretty good fire there on the um, sniper with the BA-10, but it does look like a uh, World War One battle, especially yeah. with the BA-10, little armored car. Especially if all it's no man's land and open field. But yeah, Manu has a very good amount of fire support here, of course. The big problem playing is Drymer Rapana. You really just have infantry and then a bunch of really crappy airplanes to back you up. So, as you've seen right now, he's just getting completely slacked out in the open in the center. If you told DICE when they're making Battlefield 1, hey, this is what World War 1 actually was and showed them this game, it would make a lot of sense with how that game plays. Mm -hmm. A lot of submachine guns too many tanks and airplanes op bayonet charges it's yep. the exact same <laughs> yeah it's one to one looks like we already have our first blenheim coming in from the left i think it's gonna go wipe out the yep it's wiping out the ig there it's definitely a good target here and manu's done a pretty good job just you know especially in the opener of this match you know playing as the maverick income he's got to be more aggressive he's really got to try to take out territory and it's just all the cheap armored cars is Working really well in the center, the half tracks are providing a hell of a lot of fire support out see suppression. The anti tank guns, which is supposed to actually kill them. Yeah, and you can see that Stan has just one BA 10 of his own back there, and it's kind of on its own. If it comes out, it's got to deal with a Stewart and then two other BA 10s. So he looks like he's trying to get more Lotties up, but the Lotties are going to kind of be out of position considering that Manu's doing a really good job of using his recon and spotting them before they get into the fight. Yeah, and they even got the... Oh, yeah, I forgot they have the Stewart's moving up as well. But, oh, the anti oh. has AP, and that's kind of deadly. It looks like a laser. I know, right? Just daka, daka, daka. And he's definitely going to really need to take advantage of that forest just south of the town, because these anti-tank guns is going to be the do-or-die part for him holding this town. Stan's doing a great job all the way down south as well, like you were talking about, just clearing that out. And one thing that's going to maybe come back and bite him is the two points in the middle. He has that one recon squad there, the sissy, but there's no units holding that front. So that mm -hmm. little tick down there can really make a big impact. And this is from a monthly tournament, right? So there is a time limit. Yeah, a 50 minute time limit. So, it's always funny seeing on this map, because people are always so scared pushing the center, and rightfully so, it's a big open field. But as you can see, just a little bit of infantry here and there, a little bit of pressure, and it's very easy to capture, you know, these three little flags in the center if you just put some pressure, especially if you have some artillery or shotguns guns backing you up. Yeah, and with these two divisions as well, since they are primarily infantry divisions, and the only real mobility with infantry you get is with 184th is the half track, and then really none whatsoever as Rima, then that, you know, you can push and probe the little weird areas that you normally wouldn't. Like uh, taking that town down south from both sides, a lot of times you'll see a dude put a 15 point squad in there, 20 point squad in there, and that'll be it. And then nobody does anything because they're too scared to commit. But when you have cheap Jakari with snipers and, you know, a ton of bombers, it's pretty easy to go probe it and be like, oh, cool. I would not have to spend a bunch of points on some T-34s to go try to take it out. Yeah, oh, I-53 coming in. I think he's going to try and blap that strip because that sissy is really going for the reconnaissance run and he even has smoke grenades. But no, anti air is going to completely bugger him up. That's one thing Manu's been doing really well so far is he's been just 
dictating the battle with the AA. He saw that Blenheim come out, and I think he had already called out that first 37 mil up north. Mm -hmm. So he said really early on, I'm going to put some AA up, and you're not going to be able to use all those planes that you want to, because that's the only real pushing power that Stan's going to have unless he decides to dip into artillery now. Yeah, and he's already starting to do that a little bit, getting those 83 millimeter guns onto the battlefield. So, especially with another 37 mil being brought up, I think it's going to be very hard for, you know, the really ragtag Finnish Air Force to really do any close air support here. They're up north. I mean, Stan's actually pushing back quite a bit. He's got a rather... I wouldn't say it's a combined arms force, but it's a force enough to be reckoned with. Yeah, I mean, he does have one armored vehicle, so if he brings in an airplane, then I guess we can call it combined arms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, like, one arm on each side. Yeah. Just yeah. really small T-Rex arms, but yeah. still combined arms. Yeah, it can still, like, do a little bit of a slap fight. But the infantry here is a real staying power, and of course, with Reimer apart, and Finland in general, you want to be sticking to the forest for obvious reasons. And if he can push across this road, get to the opposite forest, especially against 184, for it does have some decent infantry, but they're not DLC power creep Finnish infantry. No, they're that original uh, Strelke DP spam and mm -hmm. Cherno spam. That's way. That's the way the dodo bird. It's ancient in Seal Division terms. Yeah, unless you have like Molotovs and some really decent European SMG, just get out. <laughs> yeah, that, that can shoot you at 200 meters away. <laughs> yeah, that's for pinpoint accuracy. <laughs> that's some um, uh, like Wonderwaffe mm -hmm. nine mil there. Well, two Blenheims now, so, you know, one's not enough. Maybe two will be good enough for the bomber to make it through. And there's really not a whole lot for him to bomb. It's just really to, you know, opportunity, because there's not a lot here for to stop him if he can clear us out. One thing I think Manu's making the mistake for with these Blenheims is, as Rima, you don't have good fighters. They're pretty weak, so if you bring in the LA tens or LA sevens that the um, that one eighty fourth gets, they'll be able to deal with those Blenheims and the fighters themselves, supported by the AA. But now he's got two AA guns up north and then one down south, and they were out of position. So if Sand smells blood in the water, he's going to be able to get a good position up here up north in that one twenty two. I don't know if he'll be able to do too much if Sand gets frisky with his little anti tank biplanes and flies him around the AA net. Yeah. And especially if this map, it's very bite and hold. It's If you can get a piece of territory on this map, especially like the southern town is the perfect example, and you get that early before it's heavily entrenched, it's very easy to hold. So especially in this early game, you know, being able to push up a little bit and, you know, you know set up at no man's land, set up the defense line, you're going to be in a very good position once the game starts to go into a grind. And for Stan, he wants that because he's playing balanced. Yeah, the whole territory, it's kind of hard, and like you're saying in this map, to have like a little cloak and dagger going on where you're pushing through a forest with a couple of squads to put pressure and then show up somewhere else with another two squads. You see what's going on in this map. You see where the points where the infantry will be. You see where the tanks are going to support them because it's so wide open. And with that in mind, we see the south just completely collapse for Manu. But on the flip side, Stan could make that even worse as we see the napalm hit if he comes in and drops the uh, Blenheims on that town there. It's just a straight column of infantry there that are pretty susceptible as they push past their AA coverage. Yeah, Manu's really put a lot of the uh, pressure in trying to push through his town, especially with the opener, and it hasn't really worked out well for him. As you see, it's a bloody 16-8, and his push has been completely stopped, really just by two captured, or borrowed, I could say, BA-10s and just some Ratchavakis holding the crossroad, yeah. So he really needs to try to rethink his strategy because a 9-15, especially as Maverick, that's not ideal at this part of the match. No, and I think we can consider that BA-10 on loan. Yes, yeah. So I'll give it back, maybe, eventually. <laughs> it's least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, least we can indefinitely. See... Yeah, indefinitely until it's destroyed. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> most likely what's going to happen. Imagine being a goddamn BA-10 in 1944. Yeah, imagine being a, somebody working in insurance and claims in the 1940s in oh God. Eastern Europe. <laughs> yeah. It was not a great industry no. to be working in. No. Back up north, Stan's got the big 122s out, just pounding away on Manu's lines in... We can see Manu's calling out a combat back over um, to go up to his AA. 
What's our uh, thoughts on the combat being called out with a 122 being down <sighs> so much? Yeah, I mean, he really needs frontline units. I mean, if you're gonna get, like, you know, sick of the anti-aircraft net, that's decent and all. But I think he just needs bodies on the front line rather than just, you know, get an extra command. Because that's something you'd buy once you set up, like, a good rear line, like an artillery, battery, an anti-aircraft net, etc. Yeah, and with him being Maverick, he really needed to hold at least a 14-10 so he doesn't get the double tick. But now that he's getting double ticked, especially with the positioning that he's lost, he's going to be fighting an uphill battle. I think he's going to have to pick one point to try to break through and make a definitive win in the next you know few few minutes for himself. Or it could just be downhill as Stan starts to snowball. Yeah, really, I think Manu's best bet is just try to push center. He does have the heavy armor advantage. His main concern, of course, is all the bombers, but with a decent anti-aircraft net, just get some more 37 mils. He doesn't have any fighters, which also screws him over a bit. He can deal with that. And those run 22s on open field, there's nothing the Finns have at long range. Ridge can deal with them. Yeah, if you think those stewards that are going up north, like you were saying, should be in that middle area running around, and then just use the 122 to abuse anything that shows up and then bring up the Chernos to walk forward and also help hold the position there. Because what Stan's done is he's just flooded the field with infantry, but Manu hasn't. And that's what's really hurting Manu right now is we see a P2 go in. Oh. oh, that must have, was that a crit? I didn't see if the 122 took a hit yet. I think that was just a super unlucky strike on Manu's behalf and lucky on Stan's behalf. Yeah, that's a very good hit, and I think we've seen the Blenheims are trying to do, I thought they were trying to do seed operations, but now they're going for the support equipment. But you're completely right, it's just Stan spammed out much more infantry, and also in much more better locations. He's forcing the fight, in, you know, especially up north, in, you know, his close forest areas, forcing the Strokes to get in close, forcing the Strokes to get in close, and, well, the Finns are, like, fighting a bit close. Yeah, it's... They're, it's, they're out of their element, too. There's not a ton of trees on this map. Mm -hmm. It's a little too open for them. They don't get that wood elf bonus where, <laughs> you know, they get extra stealth and take yeah. less depression damage in the trees, if anybody didn't know that's a little hidden mm -hmm. stat. Yeah, it's another, know you know, hit Eugene hidden stat, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, power creep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he's got the off map coming in down south. I think that'll help a little bit, but it looks like if the Jakari just keep moving forward, they're going to be okay. Yeah, and it's not even, it's just one Tanko Destinitsky squad trying to hold you out here, so even then, I mean, the man who doesn't have anything to counter-attack with, which is ideally what you want when you're using off-map artillery most of the time, especially in this town fight, because he actually gets some really good hits done in that entire force, but his, you know, attack force here, these Chernos coming down the road, are going to be a little bit late. Yeah, and they don't have any AT on them, so even though that the BA-10 is out of HE, you can just walk up to them with its uh, machine guns and mm -hmm. help suppress them quicker that way, because there isn't a leader directly in the area there, and with them being disheartened, it's going to do some pretty good suppression damage to them right off the bat. Yeah, I'm honestly quite surprised he hasn't even got any of the uh, M3 leads yet, because especially in this matchup, they're pretty damn good tanks. Great fire support, cheap enough, and they also provide some leader bonus as well, and yeah. he just needs some cheap fire support to blur up those few BA-10s, any T-26s, which we haven't actually seen any, you know, which be brought onto the field, and just, you know, it's all about that fire support in the end of the day. Yeah, and the Valentine callout, I also don't, that's a little nitpicky, but there's no heavier armor to take out with it. All the other armor that you just mentioned will suffice with it. The 122 might seem like a lot, but that's got a big gun on it for fire support, but I also wanted to point out here, Stan's got those 122s shooting across the map down towards where the off map is. It's a really good use of his artillery, not getting too tunneled into using it only on one flank, even though he has it pretty far forward on the front. Yeah, and especially just that location, he knows all the forces are bunched up there yeah, because it's logically where they're going to be, and that's just going to slow down any Manu's attacks. And that's going to buy, well, I'll say, buy him a little bit of time. Manu's going to be able to get into the town because. He just completely obliterated it with the off map. But even then, there's not like a huge counter attack here. He's still down 915. He's just completely on the back foot. Yeah, the big counter attacks coming in down south. There are three more DPs coming in, and there's already some sappers and SVT shulky forward deployed with the Valentine. 
being used as infantry support in what looks like it was intended role as like an infantry tank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, slow and steady, and in this case, not even a bloody machine gun. Because you're right, just <laughs> the uh, the Valentine Mark Nine is not good infantry support. HE shells are abysmal. Heck, it didn't even used to have HP shells like patches ago, if I recall. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's really good against medium tanks like the Panzer Three, Panzer Four, mm -hmm. if you can get it into range because its rate of fire is really high. But the fact that it only has 15 HE shells that are, like you said, abysmal, it's going to not do too hot, and it's getting take, taken out by the Pack 38 so it's not long for this world. Yeah. You pretty much have to use them as, as the British use their tank destroyers as anti-tank guns. Very static. You hide them in a forest, and you don't really move them up. And in this case, in the open, on the road, even a Pack 38 can door knock him to death. Yep. Yeah, the Pack 38 sneaky, especially the finished ones, since they come with two vet naturally. So they're gonna have a higher rate of fire, and they're gonna be deadly accurate. Mm -hmm. And we see even more AA being called out by Manu. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the 85 mils up north. Still, the AA up north as well. One of the 37 mils just got counter battery to, and then, oh, he's also brought another 37 mil. He just has not unloaded it yet. But Stan's really got kind of a critical mass now of artillery and aircraft artillery good god he's got the blenheims and je 88s coming in <laughs> and the recon plane coming in too mm -hmm. that's awesome to see and they're flying in formation i know it's raw thunder moment right yeah i was just gonna say it's like the boys in worth thunder grinding yeah. low tier getting some cash that's gonna be a juicy oh. strike damn damn how to do him dirty yeah, it did, and the Yakari's now going to come in and pretty much finish him off it. And that was really hey. bad. <laughs> I caught that one. You he did. I that one by. <laughs> God damn it. Why did I bring you on? <laughs> <laughs> but now the Yakari's are coming in, and like they should be able to just mop it up now. And then, yeah, it's, it pretty much just kills Manu's attack. Like, he's trying to also do an attack in the center, but he just doesn't really have... It's just down to fire support. He just doesn't have it. Yeah, Manu had a really good opening in the town there. He had fire superiority with the 50 cows on the half tracks. He had the M42s behind covering. He had a bunch of recon with snipers. He had the stewards. And slowly stands like, okay, I'm going to trade space for time. I'm going to pick him off slowly and try and defeat him in detail. And that's pretty much how it turned out. And then once he realized, all right... I've gotten some good picks here and there. I'm going to go attack the north and the south. And it's just essentially turned the whole map into a pretty big pincer. And you can just see the bulge on the map. Mm-hmm. And then time and really? time again, Manu's keep trying to push the center, but he's just not getting anywhere, especially with Chernos. Yeah, he was trying to expand that bulge with his Chernos. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no. I I'm quite annoyed. Like, once again, I, I understand there's the mentality of no one ever really wanting to push the direct center. That would have been his best bet. Just try to force open field tank fights because the enemy doesn't really have tanks. And if you can just deal with the aircraft, once again, a bit of a mistake not having any fighters in his deck as well. That would have probably played out much better for him. Yeah, he could have even used the IL-2s in a pinch. Mm-hmm. And I understand the want for a lot of AA, but it's probably there to support the 122s. And Stan's doing a great job coming in from the flank with the PE2s. And there comes oh, wow. the uh, IL-2 recon finally. But you need to have um, both of them out at the same time to get good effect. Damn, that was yeah. a good kill. Like, yeah, fantastic micro AI not going like directly through, because as you can see down south, it is... Pretty lackluster in the anti-aircraft coverage. So, of course, it's going to put more pressure on Manu now. It's like, okay, i got to put anti-aircraft down south. You can't just have it, you know, right by your tanks. Yeah, it's very reactive. Every time something like that happens, see, he's buying another 85. It's just an immediate, okay, now i got to get more and put it there. Mm-hmm. Which detracts from actual getting frontline units, because we're seeing Stan here get a lot of T-26s <laughs> and Ratchus. Yeah, that's a long column of infantry Stan has coming in. Oh god. And it's all names which I'm fairly certain the I'm fairly certain the Finnish language is just made up. No yeah. no way people speak this. Yeah, they consist of less than one percent of the world population, mm -hmm. so it's entirely possible they're a rounding error. 
I can't I can't dispute with the numbers. Yeah, the numbers don't lie. Yeah. So if you're finished and you're watching this, I'm sorry, it's just the mm -hmm. way it is. Maybe you're actually Swedish. True. Yeah. Maybe maybe we're being gaslit into believing the Finnish are a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a big ploy for us to pay Eugen for a DLC. Mm -hmm. DLCs, it's it's all mad match plan. Mm-hmm. He oh, can't I, keep getting away with it. He can't. The ISU as well is just pushing right through the center. No recon, not a whole lot of support, and... I mean, what the, the, yeah, the pack 38 kind of stalling him, and the T-26 is trying to go for the <laughs> flank. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might actually be able to get him here. They might. Oh, At they least stress him. That was a pen. Yep, he's going to run away now, but yeah. that pack 38 is going to get him on the side there. That was a really good maneuver of the T-26s. Like, they have very hard tanks to use in this sort of map because it's so open, but, you know, you just shoot enough shells at something and it will die. And you can see it there. It's come point blank with the Sapiri. Yep. Damn, those dudes are strong. Just taking it to the face like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, while we were watching the 122 and the charge of the Light Brigade of the T-26s, the uh, position up north for Manu is kind of falling apart. Stan's getting pushed back right now, but he got that flag, and there goes the surrender. Yeah, there you go, and looking at the KD, yep, that seems about right. Over 1,000 yeah. or so. Yeah, really, Stan just... I mean, Manu had a very nice open air of the town, but he couldn't really exploit that breakthrough. And then just playing the flanks, like you said, with the pincher maneuver is just... Just perfect because he got those areas early with little cost to his forces, especially down south. He barely had to pay anything to get yet. And then he just bit and held, which, you know, surprisingly, the Finns are pretty good in, in defense. Yeah. All the Molotov cocktails, mm -hmm. all the semi auto rifles, the Swomis, and then that really good artillery and air part. So you let them get dug in, it's going to be pretty hard to get them out of there. Yeah. And then just Stan played a really good game letting himself get pushed back a little bit off the start, didn't let it snowball, and then, like you just said, immediately counterattacked and used the terrain really to his advantage. Indeed. And if you take a look at the kills here, really nothing on the Soviet side did anything all that fancy, just the 280 and the 145. Losses forever. Pack 38 at the start, doing decent, knocking out a whole, like a whole platoon of Sturich. Another pack 38 doing good, and even some of the Akari's actually picking up quite a lot of kills. Yeah, and then there's that Sissy Squad 2 killing a bunch of Strelki. Yeah, the Jakari killed two half tracks. Really good usage there on the mm -hmm. infantry. Like, honestly, I, I still think, even with all the other DLC power creeps, Jakari are the best infantry in game still. Like, they're yeah. still versatile. Yeah, there's. The only situation that they're going to be bad in is when you need a machine gun to fight a machine gun. And that's yes. literally it. And most of the time, you're within rifle range. Mm hmm. Or Shumoi range. Yeah, with that Mortar Waffle 9mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they just had, you know, the Finns had this magical technology known as flip up sights and the SMGs to actually range <laughs> it up further. Apparently, not even the Germans, the Russians, heck, even the Americans could, could figure out that. Who knew? Yeah, only the finish. Only the finish. But, uh, unless you have anything else to say, I say we finish us off. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Nilla, and uh, we'll see you next time. And as usual, awesome. please just take it easy.